Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another site review. I'm here at the Marigold Plaza, I guess, San Luis Obispo. It's the EVgo charger. I've been spending a lot of time focusing on some of the newer uh, public charging locations and sites. They're sort of the exciting ones, the ones that I go out of my way to look at, but I figured I should actually look at some of the older sites too to see how they're sort of withstanding the test of time and to see how usable they are even today. And this site is kind of interesting in that regard because it's literally the first public fast charging site that I ever used. I used it on my first 500 mile trip up north in January of 2017. This is still one of the key charging locations between San Francisco and Southern California on the Highway 101 route. And you know, I left work with the full battery, but I really didn't do much driving. I was able to make it here with 25% battery and that's good and it's bad, right? You want a charger that you can reach, but these weather conditions right now, I was facing a 10, 15, maybe 20 mile an hour headwind and cross uh, front quartering wind. So the efficiency is really bad right now. Uh, I would have normally, under normal conditions, arrived with maybe 35 to 40% battery, which is not a time when you'd actually want to have to stop and charge. But you kind of have to because if you're heading north, there are literally no other reasonable fast chargers for another 150 miles. So even if you know you had a longer range electric vehicle or you weren't ready to stop, you're kind of priced into stopping here and charging at the slower charging rates of your battery. Uh, and that's not a knock on this station. If anything, it shows the importance of this charging location. It's just that it's so needed right now because the rest of the infrastructure along this route is so lacking. But anyway, I wanted to give this a score to kind of see how these older EVgo sites, some of the most plentiful public charging sites in the country right now, how they would rank under my new uh, charging score site scale. So in terms of accessibility, I'm only giving this site an 8. And you have to go way far afield from the freeway to get here. Uh, some of it's sort of a country highway, so that's not bad, but still you have to do at least some city driving, a lot of stoplights. Uh, it's way out of the way, so just getting to the site's not that great. And the way they put the signs up, there really isn't any opportunity for full pull-through parking. And they have three chargers all bunched together and one of them's a level two, so it's really hard to get access to all three of the chargers at one time. However, that being said, uh, this is behind the facilities, so it's almost never blocked or occupied except by electric vehicles that are actually charging. So in that regard, it kind of gets bumped up for access, but still, it only gets a score of eight. In terms of amenities, I'm also giving it a score of eight. It has a lot of businesses nearby. Some of it you have to walk a little ways to get to, but most of them are reachable and it's not too bad. Uh, the big problem is if you come here too late, you're really restricted. There's no 24 hour bathrooms, but for the most part, you can find the types of businesses that you would want. Uh, there is no covering. They did work on the lighting a little bit, uh, but there's no real 24 hour security or anything of that nature either. Uh, so in terms of amenities, you know, it's only getting an eight. In terms of site concentration, even when I first started using this site, only having two fast chargers here was somewhat questionable. Uh, and now it's only gotten worse with age. Uh, two DC fast chargers at a location just isn't enough, uh, especially for one that's supposed to be, you know, supporting a highway route that's as uh, busy as Highway 101. So for site concentration, it's only getting a four. Now in terms of location, I would rank this really high. I'm actually gonna give this a nine for location. Uh, part of the reason is that it's supporting a very highly trafficked route uh, between two of the highest densities of electric vehicle ownership. You know, I mentioned it before, I got very familiar with this charger because it is so crucial for making this trip between San Francisco 
and Los Angeles along Highway 101, uh, a route that is one of the only routes that's open sometimes during winter time. So uh, that's in itself very important. And so I think a nine is justified for how important this site is, though its importance will start to fall off as other sites come online along this route. And then finally for speed. It, it's, I'm only gonna give it a five for speed. These are the 50 kilowatt chargers, the true 50 kilowatt chargers with the 125 amp uh, charging capability. Uh, so they will you know, hold somewhere between 45 and 50 kilowatts if the car is capable of charging at that rate. However, uh, you know, that's just not that impressive anymore. Uh, when I first started using it, very few cars could charge faster than it. It was as fast as any charger that was currently available publicly at the time. So, you know, 50 kilowatts was great nearly three years ago. Now, at best, it's average. It's better than the slower DC fast chargers you still see scattered around, but it's nothing to write home about. So I think a five is justified in terms of speed for this site. Now that gives it an overall score of 34. And you know, if I'm doing my math correctly, that's a 68 out of 100 or a very strong D, which is no longer passing. And I think that's maybe important for EVgo to recognize is while these uh, sites that they had, I believe they called them freedom sites originally, while they were, you know, some of the best public charging sites around three to four years ago, uh, times have changed and I feel like these sites are the ones that need to be upgraded. People have already gotten used to using them, so you might as well add some faster chargers, uh, maybe update them with some canopies like solar panel canopies, uh, and I think you'd actually start to push these older sites up to a much higher site score because I think they'd be a lot more usable and a lot more accessible. Maybe a minimum of four DC fast chargers, a minimum of 100 kilowatt charging speeds, uh, and I think these sites would be a lot more compelling. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.